Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're going to have just a discussion video about knives. Uh, this video is going to be eight things that you should know about knives. And uh, there's a whole series of like eight things videos out there online. So I thought I'd borrow that to uh, play on that little trend a little bit. I will admit that point number six has like three sub points. So I don't know if they count as like quarter points or what. So maybe it's like eight and three quarter things that you should know about knives. Maybe that's what will make the, the title of the video. Anyway, let's go ahead and get right into the list. But before I do that, the first th two things I want to say. First of all, put down in the comments below something that you think everybody needs to know about knives, especially if it's something that people probably don't know. Number two, uh, go down and check the channel sponsors down below. It's a huge help to the channel just clicking that, that just using that discount code sharp stuff and uh, saving yourself 10%. All right. Um, Let's go ahead now and get into my list now that you've had time to hear about this, the channel sponsor and to possibly add something to the list from your own uh, input, from, from your own experience. First is they are awesome, right? There are so many. They're useful. They're cool. They're fun to fidget with. They're fun to hunt and go after to find exactly the one you want. They're fun to modify. They're fun to check out when there's new innovations or designs that you haven't experienced before. So point number one is just that knives are awesome. Number two, they are a bottomless pit of desire and empty bank accounts. Uh, there are so many things out there to spend money on. You know, here's a pair of two that I needlessly modified so that it would cost me even more than pair twos already cost. Um, so uh, yeah, tons of great knives out there. They are, um, they can be difficult to find. You know, check this out. This is uh, a Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon. Absolutely beautiful, functional, fantastic knife. But man, these things are hard to get. And uh, you know, they're, they're worth getting a little excited about. Um, so yeah, you can, you can spend a lot of money that you may not want to spend. Uh, thirdly, the fact is you can actually get a lot for very little. Now, this is actually a pretty decent value proposition because to buy a Brian Nido custom is really going to set you back some decent coin. Uh, but these are definitely much more affordable. However, there are a couple of knives I want to throw in here that are worth thinking about just because the value is so good. Um, so I've got these two. Um, we could also throw this one in the mix as well. But uh, the Real Steel H6 is just a great budget knife. It's heavy duty. Uh, it will, it's highly reliable. The materials are good. The construction's good. Um, and you can pick one up, I don't know, around 50 bucks. I'm not exactly sure of the price. Let's say between 50 and 60 bucks. And it would be a great folding knife to do literally everything you love and ever need to do. If you want something a little more durable, a little tougher with a little better steel, you can go to a Cold Steel, Ameri Cold Steel American Lawman or Recon One. Uh, those are going to be over a hundred bucks but it's one of those things where you know buy once cry once like it's worth saving up the extra money to to go into one of these knives compared to that because there is a major performance upgrade and there are a number of other knives that we could put on this list but these two are the ones that i happen to have nearby so uh, i thought i would just quickly share those with you so well yeah there's a lot of money to be spent you can okay get what you need for considerably less uh, point number four, um, everybody needs them and uses them all the time. Uh, they've been a key part of human development. This is, of course, the Hinder Emmett. This is the Benchmade Super Freak. Um, you know, as long as humans have been around, they've needed to cut stuff, they needed to skin animals, prepare food for cooking, and they've been using knives for that. They are highly, highly useful and needed by every human being. And if you, you know, every culture, every occupation has knives that are um, that are unique to their individual needs. Uh, by the way, I should point out a very close um, point to point number four that everyone needs one everyone needs a sharp one okay 
knives are only as useful, right? This, this whole knife, everything about it could be perfect, but if this edge right here, okay, the secondary bevel is not good, it's useless, all right, for, I guess, maybe for prying you could use it, but otherwise it's not going to be much good. And so um, everyone needs one, but everyone needs a sharp knife. And for those of you watching who think that keeping a doll, knife dull is a safety feature, it's not. It makes cutting much more difficult, which causes you to put, put much more pressure on the knife and makes it, therefore, much more likely that you'll hurt yourself because you're applying a lot more force in a lot more, you know, awkward and foolish directions. So uh, a sharp knife is much safer than a dull one. Now, I say all of that to say, learn how to sharpen your knife. It is worth the time and energy, and you will benefit so many times over. Every time you go to, you know, prepare a meal, cut up some vegetables, cut up a roast, skin an animal, you know, prepare some some meat, you know, debone some kind of, you know, a, a fillet a fish. That's what I was trying to spit out there for the last 30 seconds. Um, you know, every time you go to do that, you'll be wanting a very sharp knife and knowing how to good, put a good edge on a knife will always be a beneficial skill. So learn how to sharpen. And I've, I have to say, I'm a, always a little concerned by the number of people who are knife enthusiasts, who have expensive knives, and then they're putting messages out there, hey, I need someone to sharpen my knife. And I'm like going, like, you're not a real enthusiast if you haven't spent a little bit of time to learn how to sharpen and sharpen well. And it doesn't take forever. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that's learnable by almost anyone. All right. I guess the only other option you would have is to, you know, use a knife until it's dull and throw it away and buy a brand new one every time or um, only buy knives with disposable blades like those Havilon knives or Olfa knives or something like that. Uh, I know you can send your knife out for sharpening, but then what are you going to do in the meantime? All right. So learn how to sharpen. Your knives need to be sharp and you need to know how to do that uh, because the fact is if I pull this knife out and I'm like, oh, crap, it's too dull to do what I need. Uh, I'll have to send it off to be sharpened, really. So whatever it was you were going to cut just then, you're like, well, I'm not going to cut it. I'm going to have to wait until uh, this knife gets sharpened and, and comes back, right? Uh, not ideal. Uh, here's another good example, CJRB um, Scoria of getting, a, you can you can get a lot of knife for a fairly affordable price. Um, not going to be, you know, it's more of a budget-ish type of knife, but nonetheless serves as a good example of point number, I think that was point number three. Anyway, back to our list. Number six, knives are tools. We made this point uh, a second ago that everyone uses them all the time for all kinds of different things. So the fact that a knife is a tool, there's some implications from there that I want to point out. First of all, use the right tool for the right job. Not every knife is designed to do everything. All right, so pick the appropriate one for what you're doing. Secondly, take good care of it. Right. We, what's the old saying? If you take good care of your tools, your tools will take good care of you. And so a knife is a tool. They need to be maintained and taken care of just like you do with all the other tools that are important and that you use to, you know, get things done in your life. Um, they are the last point here associated with this is that a knife is primarily a tool not primarily a weapon. I understand that knives can be and have been used as weapons. Number one, they don't make great weapons. Like you've really got to get close. And in, you know, the year 2021 or 22, whenever you're watching this, there are way, way, way better options. And even, you know, <laughs> tie the knife to a, to a long stick so you make it into a spear, right? That's, that's a good example of even that a better option. All right. Um, so that's number six. Those are the three sub points from a knife being a tool. Moving on to number seven, don't buy the hype, buy performance. Now I say that, um, I, I buy the hype too. We all do. We have our favorite knife designers. We have our favorite um, companies. We have, there are extra components to knives, right? I, I think I already showed you the XME. I, I, we already looked at the, the Hinder Emmet, but I love this knife. It is so cool and just I absolutely enjoy it. So there's more here, okay, than just utility, but, right, I didn't go out and buy this in the first run. I had to wait on it. Um, 
you know, it's fine to, to really want a knife, but don't let the hype and the emotion trick you into doing stupid stuff. All right, buy primarily performance based. Finally, blade steel, does it matter? Yes, it matters but not nearly as much as I think it does. Okay, you know, as, as a reviewer, I'm always going on and on about blade steel. And yes, blade steel matters. And, and I want a good high performance steel. And I want to try out the newest and coolest steels just like everybody else. But the fact is, I said this a long time ago, and I'll say it again. You know, if someone were to somehow do a magic spell and turn all my knives into 8CR13 MOV, it would probably take me a while to notice because the fact is the most of the knife most of the tasks I do don't dull knives all that bad. And the fact that I switch through so many on a regular basis means that they hold an edge for a stupidly long time as well. So um, you probably are fine with 8CR13 or 14C28N or 154CM or whatever other steel. You know, yes, you know, yes, there are some steels that are better than others. And again, like we said about uh, knives being tools, there are steels that are better suited to certain tasks than others. But most of us would probably be fine with, you know, any kind of decently okay, moderately good steel. All right, so those are the eight things you should know about knives. I'd love to hear your comments again down below. I'll remind you again to check out the channel sponsors. That does help me out a whole lot. Thanks for watching. We will talk to you soon.